Shalom Chavarim and welcome to Treasured Inheritance Ministry with myself, Aliyah. And it's so, so good to be with you today because I'm really, really excited. It says Feast of Trumpets and that is what we're going to be talking about today. That is really what I want to be sharing with you today. This is not a message particularly for the Feast of Trumpets. It is more all about what is this feast how do we celebrate it and you know what should it mean to us and how should it be because a lot of people I've been meeting over the last few weeks have been saying hey I want to know about the feast this is my first year celebrating the feast this is the first time that I'm actually you know thinking about the Feast of Trumpets or about celebrating it or how to celebrate it. And so what should I do, Aaliyah? How do I do this? And so this is what this teaching is all about today because the four feasts are incredibly beautiful and they are drawing near to us. They are so, so, so near. And, you know, in a few days we will be celebrating and entering into this special time. And it really is a time of celebration, a time of reflection, a time of joy and growth. And that time is here again because obviously these feasts, we celebrate every single year. And here it is. It happens so quickly. And as we get into it, you know, we can celebrate it with everything that is inside of us. And we begin this season of the fall feast out here in South Africa. Of course, we know it is springtime. And so it's hard sometimes to get our minds around the fact that these are the fall feasts. But that is what it is called. And we begin this season of celebration with the feast of trumpets or as it's called in Hebrew Yom Teruah and this day begins in the seventh biblical month you know biblically it is not the beginning of the new year and a lot of people say hey it's Rosh Hashanah and it's the new year but actually this is the seventh biblical month it's not the biblical new year the biblical new year begins around about Pesach time Passover time which is usually falling around about March or April so it's not the beginning of the new year as is customary in the modern Jewish calendar, which we know had its roots in ancient Babylon. And so therefore, you know what? It's always about going back to the word of Yahweh. It's always about going back to what the Bible says. Because if we truly want to become children that reflect his light and reveal the image of Yeshua to this world, we need to know what does the Bible say. And a lot of people don't like that because the truth of the matter is that much tradition and false custom has come to be celebrated within these feasts. And sadly, these customs and traditions have actually really overridden and replaced the purity of the biblical mandate for these feasts. And like I said in this teaching, you know, I'm really going to be outlining the biblical commandments as it relates to the Feast of Trumpets, as it relates to Yom Teruah, and how we should be celebrating this feast without any non-biblical add-ons. Like I said, a lot of people may not like that because... You know, the truth is that people get very used to tradition. We get used to custom. And I myself, when I first learned about the feasts all those many, many moons ago, I really was so excited about the feast. And my teacher at the time back in 2002, you know, was also himself just learning about the feast. And so we were trying to know what does the Bible tell us? But also, of course, there were a lot of these non-biblical traditions which we did celebrate. But over the years, our father has come and peeled that away and said, you know what, what is on his heart for us to do and how are we to really, really celebrate? So we need to know that it's not about customs and traditions which are also good things sometimes and you know we can learn from them but truly when they begin to replace the biblical mandates when they begin to override biblical truth and when they begin to twist scripture we need to throw them out and that is not how we should be celebrating we need to look at the purity of these feasts and so what is actually the meaning of Teruah. Well, we find, you know, the day of uh, of the Feast of Trumpets, we find this mentioned in Leviticus 23. And, and it's just, you know, two simple verses, 23, 24, 25, which is three simple verses I can count. Yahweh said to Moses, say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts do no regular work but present a food offering to Yahweh you know what this is all that we have been given from the mouth of Yahweh here in Leviticus 23 in his Torah on how we are to celebrate the feast of trumpets so I'm going to break it up for you firstly what is the meaning of Teruah 
That is the first thing that we need to know. So the Hebrew word for trumpets is, is teruah, and it actually means blowing and the blowing of the two silver trumpets that's mentioned in Numbers 10. That's what characterized this feast. In fact, these trumpets were so significant in their symbolisms and design that this feast is all about the Israelites blowing these trumpets with joy and celebration. And like I said, that's found in Numbers 10, 1 to 2 and 8 to 10. And I'm going to read it to you. And it says that Yahweh said to Moses, make two trumpets of silver and use them for calling the community together and for having the camps set out. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to blow the trumpets, and this is to be an everlasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle on your own land against the enemy who is oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you will be remembered by Yahweh your God and rescued from your enemies. Also, at your times of rejoicing, your appointed festivals and new moon feasts, you are to sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and they will be a memorial for you before your God. I am Yahweh your Elohim. This is what it says in Numbers 10. What does this actually really mean? Well, this is what it actually means. The two silver trumpets, they have such deep significance and we've all but lost the celebrations that we have with these two silver trumpets and what they actually mean. And the two silver trumpets, they held very deep significance in ancient Israel and still today spiritually, and they were to be used by the priests to gather the people together to call for war and battle, and to indicate the times of new moons and festival times, just like what we're going into now. There was no such thing as NASA calendars, we know, or predictions on the new moon. They didn't have those kind of things. Instead, it was actually a beautiful way. I would, I would have loved to have been there and actually seen how they did this because it was absolutely beautiful. If you go and look historically what was happening, because eyewitnesses were required to physically actually sight the moon. And only once the first sliver was sighted, oh, and that requires a very, very strong beady eye. Once that first sliver was sighted by more than two individuals, two individuals at least, but more sometimes were required, and their accounts were ratified, then huge fires would be lit on the mountains of Israel so that all the towns and all the cities could celebrate the new moon sighting. And that we read about in Numbers 28, 11 and Psalm 83, 3. And you know what? That was how it was done. So there were eyewitnesses and they were looking out for the moon. And once they saw it, these big fires would be lit all over and on top of the mountains so that the people in the neighboring cities could themselves know that this was going to be happening. And then, of course, a, a new moon sacrifice would take place at the temple of Yahweh in Jerusalem. But so that everybody could know it was the new moon and they would have family gatherings and they would they would just be you know, in a time of joy. And so that's what would really happen. And now the same is true for Yom Teruah. It is the day we cannot predict. We cannot predict it. Yes, we now have, you know, technology that helps us be able to do these predictions. And we have our NASA calendars and all of these things. But we actually have to physically see the first sliver and its sighting. Because once we do that, as the Bible says, the feast will begin. And this celebration of physically sighting the moon draws us back to those days of the very first celebrations of Yom Teruah, which used to happen in ancient Israel with all that excitement and all that anticipation of seeing the moon actually rising. And the beauty of the rising new moon is that even though dates can be fixed by calendars and times can be fixed, the moon may not rise at those predicted times. I don't know if you've ever, you know, seen a, a new moon when it's new and it's not the one that's the first liver that's sitting up in this like quite high up overhead. That's already a day old moon. You know, the first little sliver will arise in the sky and sometimes you'll see it if there's clouds, it will be hidden, but it, it's there for maybe about 20 minutes and then it sets again because it's very, very new and there's this anticipation, will it rise or not? And sometimes times that are predicted by calendars, they, they predict, yes, the new moon is here tonight and you will go and you will watch for it and it will not rise. It's it's a dark night. And so the next day will be the time to sight that new moon. And, you know, the moon has its own way of rising up and going down when it wants to. So in waiting for the moon to rise and sometimes feeling that disappointment when it does not show itself, that's really a reminder of how we need to be truly watching and waiting for our Messiah's signs for our time and for his close return. 
which sometimes we don't talk enough about. You know, sometimes people talk about Yeshua returning and they, they almost talk about it with a lot of dread. But really, it should be a time of great expectancy and a time of great anticipation, you know, for the children of Yahweh. And we need to be watching and waiting over our own lives because he will return and he will return soon. And it says that, you know, surely the day of his soon return is a day which no one knows the hour of and no one knows the exact time of. Yeshua said that, said no one knows the hour, no one knows the day except the Father. And we read about that in Matthew 24, 36. So practically, what do we do? How do we celebrate this feast? Well, sight the moon and then blow the silver trumpets throughout the 24-hour celebration. So it's not just about blowing the trumpets when you sight the moon, of course. When the moon is sighted and it's up in the sky and you see it, blow those trumpets with all of your might. Now, you know what? The shofar, the ram's horn, is commonly used today. As the silver trumpets are very hard to come by and they are very expensive. Now, I do know congregations who are returning to uh, celebrating with the silver trumpets and there's a lot of excitement when that does happen but I do know the silver trumpets are very expensive and they are hard to come by so we use the ram's horn today the shofar although we know in the original Hebrew of Leviticus 23 the word shofar actually does not appear the word specifically stressed the importance of the silver trumpets and you know there's a message in that too which extends far beyond what we're going to be talking about today but you know this day of the feast of trumpets is is shrouded in mystery there's so much that we don't know about it and also the silver trumpets having been literally lost over the last 2000 years no one really even even you know wanting or desiring to get silver trumpets but over the last 10 years people have have felt the stirring of the spirit again inside of their hearts to get themselves those silver trumpets and that is why people are doing it. and I encourage you yourself to get silver trumpets if you can if not it's not a big deal because you can use your ram's horn and you can use your shofar because it's been used for all and many, many years. And it's okay because that's also what was used in the Bible as well. People were using ram's horns, although, you know, in the temple, the silver trumpets were used. So many reasons really have been suggested, you know, for the fact that this, these silver trumpets have to be used during Yom Teruah. And one reason is because of the commandments surrounding the silver trumpets and their significance for the the Israelite camp because you know Yom Teruah really ushers in a time of remembrance and it should usher in a time of remembrance because it is all about rem remembering and what do we really remember because in Leviticus 23 it actually says that Yom Teruah this feast of trumpets is a memorial it is a remor memorial of blowing of the the trumpets and so for us we know that our remembrance of deliverance and victory in our lives is all wrapped up in Yeshua's deliverance in our lives and his overwhelming victory that he had over death and over everything else that held us captive, not just our, our captive to our sin or captive to the fact that we were dead in our sin, he made us alive, but everything else that held us captive, the things that we still struggle with, you know, the, the secret sins, the hidden things, or all the, the hurdles, the struggles that we've needed. He he came and he delivered us from all those things and gave us freedom and helps us on a daily basis to walk free and come even more free. So Yom Teruah is referred to in the Torah, as I said, as a memorial time. It is a day to remember something significant and to celebrate the essence of remembering our present salvation, as well as our expected ultimate deliverance when we meet our Messiah face to face. And when we, as the word says, put off this body of death, you know, the word to also means to shout, to lift up your voice and to proclaim. It's all about shouting those praises. It's all about worshiping. It's a day to sing aloud. It's a day to pray. Praise Elohim. It's a day to just really rejoice in who he is with so much joy and so much victory. And that's really what the word Terura is about. Yes, it is about the blowing of the of the trumpet it is about blowing if you have a shofar to blow your shofar but it's also about praising it's also about shouting aloud and proclaiming to people what your mighty Elohim has done what else does the bible tell us about how to celebrate the feast of trumpets well it says something that is very very significant now the feasts are called sabbath 
days and Yom Teruah is no exception because it says that it's referred to as a Sabbath day or in Hebrew a Shabbat, Shabbaton, which just means a high holy day where no work is to be done in the same way that one observes the weekly Sabbath. So two feast days are also days of rest. No dealing with money, no going down to the shop, wandering into the marketplaces. It is a day of holy rest. It is a time to spend with the Almighty in His Word, in prayer, in studying His Word, and in fellowship with other believers. This is a vitally important aspect of the Feast of Trumpets. And in fact, Yahweh tells us to have what is called, also in the original, the Mikra Kodesh, which is a sacred gathering of believers who are actually worshipping together because the word Kodesh you know means holy sanctified set apart Mikra being this gathering the set apart gathering of of believers who are worshiping together of people who are called by his name so that is what we have to do we we are going to be having a sacred gathering where we come together and we worship together and it's a sabbath so no worshiping together and then go, popping on over to the coffee shop afterwards and spending money or buying clothes make sure you do all of those things you know before Get together, have a Sabbath, sanctify the day because it is a Shabbat and have a sacred gathering. Now, practically, many individuals who are not in communities or who are far out from gatherings and places of fellowship can gather for feast services these days online or with a friend. And there are many ways to gather to celebrate the feast. And one should always pray about how you sure want you to worship on these feast days. And I cannot, you know, reiterate that enough. Over the years and, and over the over so many years and so many feast gatherings, we always pray and ask the Father, where do you want us to be? Where do you want us to be to be fellowshipping? Where do you want us to maybe just go and receive? Or where do you want us to go and share? And so that is so important that we do that with every feast time so that we are fellowshipping in the place where the Father wants us to fellowship. And you know, it's important. And this year we are having special broadcasts, live broadcasts, which we will be doing. And if you're interested, you can always join us. Just pop us an email and say, hey, what's going to be happening? Because we will be having, you know, live streams where we are going to be fellowshipping together and we're going to be blowing the shofar and blowing the trumpet and just having a time. Because we know that there are many, many individuals who are not in communities and who are far out. So if you want to join us, send us an email and we will let you know when we're the exact date and time of those live streams. So you know what? Back to the biblical requirements what are these biblical requirements now like I said I'm big on what does the Bible tell us to do because essentially that is how we should be living out our faith so four specific requirements are mentioned in Leviticus 23 I've touched on them above and so I'm going to summarize them as follows because now you're sitting going okay I want to get down I want to get down to the nitty-gritty and I want to know exactly what I'm supposed to do have a Sabbath rest Mm -hmm. sanctify Yom Teruah as a Sabbath for the full 24 hours of the feast and do no work as the Torah instructs in verse 25. Now, when I first celebrate, started celebrating the feast, I remember in 2002, 2003, 2004, I found the Sabbath of the the feasts quite difficult initially. And initially, I found that, you know, you have your weekly Sabbath and that became pretty easy to celebrate. But I found then when I had an extra Sabbath in the week, it became hard. At the time, I was obviously at university, so I could take days off, but it did become hard because it was a struggle and it became something that I had to get used to. So give yourself a bit of grace, but know that if you've been celebrating this for a long time, you know, and you're still struggling with it, pray and ask the Father to help you because I know that for some people it's really hard, but other people, they look at their calendar right at the beginning of the year and they look and they plot the feast days and then they take those days off from work and and that's how they do it. And I know a lot of people in the fellowships where I've been over the years that actually do that. So there is a way to get around this, but do take that full 24 hours of the feast out. Gather and worship with like-minded believers. That's the ultimate on this day. And yes, it's not always practical for everybody. Let Yeshua lead you. Blow the trumpets, shout in praise, sing and worship. You know, if you can't be with like-minded believers or you can't be in a fellowship, you can blow your trumpet. You can shout in praise, you can sing and you can worship you can do this all on your own, like you would do on a normal day when you're having your quiet time. 
blow the trumpet, shout in praise, sing, worship, put that music on, praise him. And I think most importantly, reflect and remember Yeshua's offering for you. Why is that important? Well, it is important because of what, you know, the Torah says about this feast. It actually talks about bringing an offering for the feast. And in our faith communities, we are often taught about the significance of Yeshua's death as our ultimate atonement offering for sin yet we're not really taught the significance of Yeshua's death as fulfillment of the many different types of offerings commanded in the Torah there wasn't just a sin offering or a guilt offering there were many different types of offerings that are mentioned throughout the Torah and that were to be offered at both the tabernacle and then later at the temple in Jerusalem and you know what there the eight biblical feasts which are outlined in Leviticus 23 which I read from were also designated times to offer different types of of harvests or food offerings and that's what it was called and these offerings were presented at the temple and they were in addition to the regular sin offering and the free will offerings that were mentioned and on Yom Teruah Yahweh actually stated that a food offering was to be brought and one that was offered by fire this term referred also to the guilt offerings, the burnt offerings, and any kind of offering that was offered on the altar as a whole or even partially. So there are different types of offerings and these were presented at different feast times. And obviously the worshippers who appeared three times a year before Yahweh in Jerusalem at the pilgrimage feast, they were commanded not to appear empty handed but to come with offerings. And that we read about in Deuteronomy 16, 16. And so for the feast of Yom Teruah, We no longer have to offer a fire offering. We know that Yeshua not only became the sin offering for us all, he also became every single one of the offerings that we were required to offer. And that is absolutely the truth. Yeshua, with his death, with his resurrection, with his ascension, with the fact that he became high priest, he became everything. He is absolutely everything. He He became all of those offerings. He became every single one of them and embodied what every single one of them stood for, what every single one of them was supposed to do, what every single one of them had a a significance to, which is incredibly deep. He embodied all of those things. And so that is why I want to encourage you on Yom Teruah to truly reflect on what Yeshua has done for you and to celebrate joyfully what it really means to be set free because that's so 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 important you know Yeshua really set us free and he set us free to serve him with joy and with passion and so you know what we know that we serve a living God and he will come back at the final blast of the trumpet it says it in his word it's going to happen and this makes our feast all the more meaningful and it gives us so much more to celebrate it gives us so much more to celebrate knowing that we have a living Elohim we serve a Messiah who's not dead he's alive he has he has come and he is coming again he is reigning and he will rule forever and you know what this needs to be the ultimate 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 cornerstone of everything that we do it's easy to get wrapped up in what do these feasts mean but you know what at the center of these feasts is our obedience to his word the desire to be holy because he is holy and the desire to always know and reflect that messiah yeshua is worthy of our praise he's worthy of everything that we can bring to him and so as this feast is a memorial time the torah doesn't actually tell us what we are remembering but for us we know that what we can remember memorize and just take as a memorial to us is the victory the overwhelming victory that we have in messiah yeshua he is a mighty elohim and an awesome king and so this year as you come to celebrate the four feasts whether it be your first time whether it be your 31st time that you're celebrating this feast no matter what may this feast bring such joy to your heart may it be a time where you walk in obedience to the father may it be something that you will experience a testimony through may you have a testimony of things that he's going to do in your life during this feast a testimony of his goodness a testimony of deliverance a testimony that if you're still struggling with things in your own heart in your own life do not panic bring them to him and and ask him to father deliver me so that i can present my life as a first fruits offering to you first of everything i want to be everything for you abba father help deliver me seek his deliverance seek his grace seek his goodness seek him 
on these feasts. And I really want to pray a blessing over your family today. That if you are celebrating as a family, as a, a physical family or as a spiritual family, I pray that your celebration will be blessed. I pray that the, that the Holy Spirit will descend and that He will just meet with each and every single one of His children that are gathered together. That your family will experience a renewal and a revival and a touch of His Spirit. That you will experience such joy as you have never felt before and that it will be overflowing. That on this feast, my prayer is that those who are battling with depression, that that depression will be gone in Yeshua's name. That those who are battling with despair, that that despair will be replaced by happiness happiness and joy and a vision for the future. I want to pray that those who are burdened and are weary will, will be and experience a deep release. And I pray that the joy, not just of this feast, but the joy of Yeshua will be so evident in your heart and life that it's going to take away everything that you are burdened with today and during these feast time. Any form of depression or despair, or worry or fear, panic, anxiety, anything, be gone in Yeshua's name. Because this is the time where you have a father want to set us free you came for us in every single way and you're not going to leave us the same so have a father we just thank you we just praise you and we want you and we want to serve you we want to honor you but we want you on this feast you are our king and we just want to give you everything and we just want to know you and be known by you don't forget today friend that is listening to this that Yahweh wants to be known by you. He wants you to know Him. He didn't just come so that we could have an idea of Him or a thought of Him. He wants to be known by you as much as what He knows you. You are fully known by Him. He wants to be known by you. So I pray that you will have a Chak Sameya, a beautiful, joyful feast that will just culminate in so much goodness in your life and that the joy of the feasts these four feasts that are coming, starting with Yom Teruah, this beautiful, beautiful day that is going to start a wave of goodness, a wave of grace, a wave of newness in your life, new mission, new calling, new purpose, new place, new people, new everything in your life where he wants to send you. It has been so good to share this time with you. I just really want to pray that you will be blessed. I pray these blessings over you today. That you will just know our Father's goodness. That you will know His nearness. And so bless you, bless you, bless you. If you want to continue to be with us during these feasts, we're going to be putting out some really great things during these feasts. Then go on over and, you know, we are just subscribe to the YouTube channel and you will get all of those beautiful beautiful teachings coming out thank you for spending this time with me it has been so good until next time shalom shalom